Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll. I'm here in my mix room in Nashville working on some stuff for the matinee and AJ Woodworth. Uh, I had the privilege about a month ago to travel up to Vancouver, Canada and record them at the famed Armory Studios. And uh, as great as that studio is, uh, they had a limited collection of ribbon mics. And I'm a, very much a Cascade ribbon mic fan. Uh, um, have really gotten into this whole new revolution rediscovering of the ribbon mic. So I uh, boarded the plane with my Cascade Fatheads and took them up there. Very glad I did. Um, used them uh, all over the electric guitars and the banjo. And I've got the mix session pulled up. So let me show you how I, I was able to make these uh, work in the mix. All right, guys. So the first thing uh, I should say is that Matt Rose, the guitar player of the matinee, has a very great tone uh, right out of the box. Um, what he had that day was two amps. We, we had his uh, Fender uh, with a 57 right up against the grill, and we had a Doc Z with a Cascade Fathead 2, uh, again, right up against the grill and centered between the cone and the edge, you know, just very standard uh, mic placement. And um, we were, I double-tracked every guitar pass that he did, and the reason being um, is when I got back to the mix room, I could decide between uh, either one. It, you know, if I would pre-blend them uh, in the studio, uh, I wouldn't be able to choose just one mic or the other. And what you'll hear here is that the difference between the two mics, uh, you know, is so drastic that um, you know, oftentimes one of them fits the mix much better than the other one. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, you know, mean it's a, a better mic, worse mic, whatever. It's just where it fits. So here's the sound of the Fathead 2 on Matt's, what I call, as, a real, uh, as being a southerner, a meat and potatoes electric pass. So this is playing pretty much all the way through the song. So here's... Okay, so that's the Fathead with all my treatment on it. Okay, so I'm going to tur turn my EQ and uh, compression off and let you hear the 57 uh, up against the fender raw this is you know a mic that we everybody out there should know okay sounds great but obviously very different uh, again here's the fat heads Okay, you hear how smooth the bottom end and the mids are, how full it is. It just it just worked for me. It just seemed to be the one, you know, that, that fit the whole. Okay, so, uh, so next let me go over to the guitar solo. Uh, the guitar solo is cut in half between a uh, you know regular pick guitar and then a slide guitar. Uh, on the slide guitar, um, again, double tracked with the same setup, uh, but here's the Fathead 2. Uh, I chose it as the standalone uh, sound that you hear in the finished mix. Okay, now here's the 57. Okay, pretty pretty significant difference. Uh, I guess you know you can probably hear why I chose the fat head. I really liked the body uh, of the. Um, you know the fat head. It just it, it's front and center at that point. I didn't you know I didn't need to worry about thinning it out to fit around vocals. Uh, it just it just worked. And uh, here's the finished sound with my uh, things on it. In the track. Sounds great. Very happy with that. All right, guys. Now on to the banjo. Uh, what I did is I double tracked it. Uh, I had a, a large diaphragm condenser, and, um, as you can see right there in the track name, uh, it was a C12. Uh, you know, like a fifteen thousand dollar vintage tube mic. Great mic. Um, wonderful mic. Uh, and I put that in the fat head two together. And the reason being, uh, as I stated before, when I get back to the mix room, I want choices. Uh, to see what fits the mix and gives me the vibe I'm looking for. 
Uh, I chose the Fathead uh, ultimately. Uh, here's it uh, soloed, the Fathead on the banjo, and this is pretty raw, no effects or anything. Okay, now here's the C12. Okay, both of them sound great. Uh, that, that's not the issue. The issue was what I was looking for. Uh, what I was looking for was the slightly muted transient of the ribbon mic. Uh, it just sat in the mix prior to any type of compression or anything uh, better. And the, um, the mid-range, uh, I guess you, you probably could hear that. And let me give it to you again. L listen to the mid-range. Versus this. You hear that somewhere between 800 cycles and, and 1,000, maybe up to, uh, you know, almost to two. Um, the smoothness of the uh, and fullness of the fathead was what I was looking for. That was the hole that was available to me in the mix. Yeah, so anyway, this is kind of what it sounded like ultimately. As you can see, bone dry, no effects uh, of any type, uh, you know, uh, reverb or delay that is. <laughs> That's where I wanted it to sit. I wanted it to be heard, uh, but the guitars were the featured element, so I just kind of wanted it there in its place, and the sound of the fathead, um, you know, is, is what placed it where I wanted it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing the way that I use Cascade mics in everyday uh, mainstream music mixing, um, as well as how they stand up side by side compared to other industry standard mics that you've all heard before and probably even own. So um, I just can't say enough good things about these microphones. The company and I are working on some other things in the near future that's going to be uh, very fun for you to see too uh, on a lot of using the mics uh, on various sources that you'll, you should find very interesting. So stay tuned to Cascade's social media sites and YouTube and we'll get that stuff out the door to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.